This is a podcast from the Queen City Podcast Network. Welcome to Nerd School. Nerd! 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 Yeah. Suck it, nerd! 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 Uh. Me, daddy ass. Nerd, nerd, nerd. Welcome to Nerd School. My name is Low Key. Welcome to the Nerd School podcast. You jerk. TBJ in the house. What a way to start the show. Yes. Hello. Welcome back. Finally, TBJ has come back. Finally. To the Nerd <laughs> School back. podcast. Greetings all, greetings all. And she That's used right. to talk about her favorite Marvel movie, possibly. One of favorites, yes. I am excited. I am ready. I rewatched and just went through some emotions that I went yeah. through the first time again. Mm. And I was like, yeah. mm. then I got really excited because there was about to be an exhibit in Raleigh with the, from the designer who designed the costumes for this show opening at the end of the month and it was just like perfect really? time for me to talk about black panther is yes. it gonna be like an exhibit at like a museum or something yeah it's the north carolina museum in raleigh or north carolina oh. art museum i can't remember the name yeah but they are about to have an exhibit on afrofuturism Ooh. Uh, featuring her and i was like uh count me in i will take the train over to raleigh and yeah when you say that up when you say her, it's a, it features the costume designer for this movie? Yes, Ruth. Ruth Car- with a Ruth Carter? Uh-huh, who is, in fact, the first Black woman. Here we go on Women's History Month. She's yeah. the first Black woman to win an Oscar in that category. So, Ooh. big up, Ruth. And she won Boom. it for, for Black Panther? At this point, she's won it twice. Boom. For Did she win it for Wakanda Forever, too? Or yep. uh, is that the second one? Yes. Oh, so that's cool. She is killing the game. And so that came up on my feed in the last couple of days and then watching it. And I'm just like, yes, all the things. Yeah. Yes. And all this also just reminded that. me of how we felt culturally, yeah. like as a people, people mm-hmm. with brown and black skin yeah. when this movie came out. Oh, look at her. Okay. Ruth yeah. Carter. I've Are you never, looking at it now? Yeah, I'm just looking her up. Yeah, this is interesting. I because one of my big questions was going to be, I mean, I know you guys love this movie, but like, as I watched it and in the costumes, really was a big question of mine. I was like, was it? I didn't even look or search anything. I just that was going to be one of my questions. It's like, did people feel this was authentic? Did they like the design? Did they think it was, you know, I would I'd imagine if it was done by some uh, crazy white comic book guy <laughs> wouldn't have been received as well or have done as well obviously but i didn't even i didn't even think much into it other than no i like will know this, the beautiful but now thing yeah it was cool about this movie and and the vision was there's so much in here that is pulled from actual countries in africa that are not just for movie purposes so costuming yeah. language these are real things utilized in this movie they were very intentional that if they were going to do it they were going to do it and there's no flaking around it and i love it for that oh, it's yeah. also just a good movie but yeah yeah you know. size that but just very colorful and and beautiful design and everything with because that's like how that. our ancestors be yeah and, and it's not something you would see like the the, the thing uh have we mentioned that we're talking about black panther Can oh we introduced that uh, <laughs> dear listeners know. welcome know. to the episode featuring black panther <laughs> Yeah. It's uh, just not a thing that had been done on this scale before. Uh, right. Like we had Meteor Man and uh, Blank Man and uh, as actual like legit. Well, not even. I don't know. I think Blank Man was just like a comedy. And that was yeah, I was probably... say Blank Man wasn't really. I mean, it was legit for us as a people when it came out. I watched that well, guy. Yeah. But... Well, I, mean, uh, I haven't actually seen Blank Man. Is that like uh, offensive to the differently abled at some point? Because I sort of imagine that. I mean, all comedy at that point was probably. I haven't seen it in a while, but I'm willing to bet. Oh, money. it was Damon Wayans when he did that character that was. Yeah, if I remember. That Which was is, I think, is also. I think it, it came out of In Living Color. Living Color. Yes, right? it was, was a lot of that crew on this project. Right. 
Oh, uh, on the on Black Panther, a lot of the same people. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm I'm blank uh, man, blank man. Where oh, he was oh, like a lot of the living color people. Where I'm like, sorry, I missed a step there. Keep up, Joe. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, just like this yeah. level of focus on uh, African culture, black culture, on on the level of a major tentpole blockbuster action movie. That just like mm -hmm. <laughs> this was a new level of respect to uh, uh, oh, wow the culture. She's working on, I think. She's working on a lot yeah. of stuff. I'm gonna get it's you. It's one of those things where you know you have to see it, and I'm sure Andy will fill us in with the comic book details. But like, it's not a new thing. Like Black Panther didn't just come onto the scene. Of course, were there were there vanilla people upset that the strong black hero was featured? They're always upset. Yeah, but <laughs> but it's I, not like, like they it, they it, made it's... him. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, I feel like the the nerds are more angry at women lead characters than black lead male lead characters. It's a little that, above. A little they more are misogynist okay with black lead characters as long as their lights aren't diminished. But yeah. it's all out war on all women. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah the white nerds male ridiculous. fragility one hundred and one. Yeah. You can see it in your comic book store near you sometimes. Mm. And some of it is just straight up male fragility too, because it's the oh, uh, can't get a yeah. girl type of guys, as our star said. That uh, it's my favorite kind of fragility because they're like, oh, women are so emotional. And I was like, are we? Because some of us have tantrums and some of us don't, and it's not usually the woman having a tantrum unless it's a Karen. <laughs> oh darn! Uh, so is Karen is saying Karen a misogynist? Like I feel like it's. I mean. I guess you uh, Karen is a Karen. We say a Karen. That's cultural. <laughs> yeah. Misogynist. You got your own versions. Okay. Y'all pull a Kevin sometimes. Kevin, that's right. I was gonna say it's, it's <laughs> Kevin or Brad. <laughs> yeah. Chad. A Chad. A Chad. Chaz. Chaz. When Chad, I try Chad to is, think yeah. of like harnessing the strength of a mediocre white guy, his name is Chad. Okay. Sorry I, to I, all the Oddly enough, there. I think Chad is uh incel terminology for alpha males that they're jealous yeah. of. Yeah, really. So, yep. Yeah. So yeah. weird. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I so I'm excited about her uh uh Ruth Carter's you want to go with me? Filmography. Well, ask uh, your wife if she wants to go with me, Joe. Oh, she would probably really to this museum. Go. I know that's why I said um, we can have a date. She... You and Art can do whatever. <laughs> <laughs> she worked on I'm gonna get you boys sucka, will be boys. Do the yep. right thing, Mo Beta Blues, House Party I... 2, Jungle Fever, Malcolm X, What's Love yeah. Got to Do with It? Crooklyn, she's done Money a lot. Train, Clockers, the Great White. I mean, she's Baps. a queen. Babs, baby. Babs. Ah. But I mean, think just, about all that man. work and uh man. a lot of that while good and cultural, like I watch that in my household, it is not mainstream, a lot of that work, right? Yeah. And so this was her getting her mainstream do because this movie came out 2018, right, Andy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the fact that she is the first black woman to win an Oscar in that category in 20, that would have been 19 season. Like, come on, guys. Yeah. Yeah, and she didn't even start her first film was until 1988. So you're talking years of right? films that, yeah, uh, yeah, that's crazy. That's so that's cool. So this, when did you say this thing, this exhibit is going to be? Do you know offhand or just like? Sorry, I said uh, April 1st. I think. It's okay, the, so you it starts that, April right? through August. So if you're living in North Carolina, April 1st through August, I think it's at sixth. It will be at the um, Museum of the Arts in Raleigh. Wow, and it's it's you said it's an exhibit on future pro futurism afro futurism that's a which crazy. which like so this this black panther this version of black panther is based off of the tanahasi coats run of black panther which yeah. leans heavily in the afro futurism uh, also I, if you I, haven't read tanahasi coats go do that a tanahasi coats is a, is a great right also also little plug little plug Tanahasi Coat, West Baltimore native. Oh, is he? We grew up probably ten minutes apart from each other. You got his uh, phone number? I don't know. I don't know him personally. So you're not friends with him? Like <laughs> I just know he's from West Baltimore. With everyone else. But some you were in the same room at the same time, right? I was in the room where it happened. Maybe you were <laughs> where the magic happened. Were you in the room where it happened? 
Well, yeah, this, he yeah. is an excellent writer who doesn't just write comics. So let me know that he yeah. has done yeah. some YA literature and some um, uh-huh. between other the literature. world and me is all, was it between the you uh-huh. and, uh, and then the um the water dancer the water dancer is good too yeah yeah it yeah. is uh, he so started, he's a fabulous yeah. writer who took over the writing of this comic he started writing it in 2016 but a lot of this moving a lot of the characters and concepts uh, are. Uh, taken from the Christopher Priest run of Black Panther in the 19 started in 1998 uh, when they launched the Marvel Knights imprint. Um, I beg uh, to differ because like like the Afrofuturism aspect of it was what didn't didn't wasn't always a big thing in Black Panther comics. Like look, 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 at, look at some of the, look at the books. Look at the, I don't want to say the more recent. So but let's call that. it a hybrid. How about that? Yeah. Well, we can, we can call it a hybrid, but mm-hmm. if you look at the books that were made a little bit before this, and it's 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 different. It's not like it doesn't, you don't have the same vibe that you had when Tell Tiny Heisey Coates, Tiny you know, Heisey Coates started writing the book. Well, Coates went like full on like let's go to outer space let's right. uh and that's that's, that's the afrofuturistic afrofuturism part mm-hmm. of it you know and afrofuturism know. is is the mixing of science fiction and african culture to some extent but uh i'm just saying the the dormelage zuri N- nakia okoye yeah the characters uh, yeah but I'm, I'm talking more of the environment of wakanda like how Wakanda evolved. Oh, again, can we say they took inspiration out of two they worlds? They want me and Andy to battle. I do not <laughs> want to battle. I'm not, not like, I, I I can't uh, speak too much to the coach. I, I know of it and I've read some of it, but it's unfortunately fallen after I really got burned out on comics and haven't been reading much. Yeah. But uh, just like from like the initial concept of Wakanda was uh, pretty much this idea of um the this hidden nation of high tech unbelievably advanced society uh that is secretive and it, in this in this continent that is too often uh you know like white people don't know shit about it and think it's all uh Friendly. primitive farmers and they play with this a whole lot in the throughout the movie yeah and uh, so that was kind of the thing back in 66 with uh fantastic four number 52 stanley jack kirby introduced t'challa oh so t'challa right. started out and wakanda was introduced in fantastic four yes in that com like so it's like a thing where they mm-hmm. go there for some reason and, and that's when shows up yeah uh actually i think the first thing that happens uh, if i recall correctly is that black panther sort of invites the fantastic four to visit wakanda and, and under the guise of a cultural sort of thing and then he springs a bunch of traps on him because he's trying to test his metal against uh the superheroes of the era and this is you know 66 and that kind of fits in with the idea of that priest did in the marvel knights uh run where like he was a long time like since the 60s black panther was you know he was like the first black superhero even though he's like the king and the thing but yeah he was like the first thing and he was in the avengers as in in that regard but then like they sort of revealed that he only joined the avengers to spy on them and make sure they weren't yeah. to wakanda because and that's the that's the difference between being like a regular superhero and what black panther is and is he's a king and he's uh the protector of his country he's not just a guy yeah. looking to for revenge and he's not fight. avenging anything he is yeah. just protecting his people um andy correct me if i'm wrong wasn't priest like one of the first black comic book persons in mainstream comics one of them one yeah of the first writers I mean, like acknowledged in the mainstream yeah he was originally uh Who, what's the name again uh, it's christopher priest but he was originally yeah, i think uh, james owlsley i think owlsley. That's his real name yeah and um and he wrote during the 80s and a lot of stuff like that and then and then like after he took over black panther and kind of just made it sort of this amazing like just sort of opened up the world a lot because black panther didn't have like outside of jack kirby doing a lot of uh jungle action in the 70s and stuff and there was this uh, writer named don mcgregor who did a lot of fleshing out of nooks and crannies of wakanda and like traditions and like the geography of it like he created like a whole map of uh wakanda but and, and priest took a lot from that but 
And then uh, after this, uh, priests sort of started resenting being pigeonholed as the black writer. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. like people that only pitch him black Which characters. I understand. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, and so. he, he early on, he was an assistant editor for Larry Hama, who Artstar and I oh, my, met oh, and became kind of basically oh, yeah, best friends yeah. with. Yeah. Are you best yeah. friends with him? <laughs> yeah. I love it. You have this wonderful relationship with Don Cheadle and with Larry now. It's Don Great. Cheadle, Larry Hama, Artstar, and I are the new Wu Tang. Uh, <laughs> Forever. A new Wu Tang clan. Um, oh, yeah. Interesting. It's our own version of it. No, but so Larry Hama and Larry Hama kind of said the same thing. Like he would also get like pigeonholed as an Asian yeah. comic. Pri- Priest was the yeah. first black writer for Marvel Comics. And he goes well, by Priest, think- like just Priest. That's kind of cool. This yeah. is cool. I didn't well, know about this guy before. I haven't heard about him before. So, this but is, yeah, yeah. Th- this movie. I mean, not to. Uh, I mean, because this was in development before Coates even started writing uh, Black Panther. It was. Marvel. So, I mean, I'm sure there's elements, and I'm sure he was a consultant. But a lot of this, these concepts and stuff, are based on the pre stuff, and it's always been high tech, hidden high tech world, and like the isolationist nature of wakanda um but yeah this is just this i was so excited for this when it came out and because i was a big fan of this marvel knights run i was that's made me a fan of the character just because it was basically taking uh like a character that just just sort of uh it hadn't had the respect it deserved it just sort of taking you in there and uh, he he was he gave it a little uh like a sarcastic white boy point of view character in Everett K. Ross, who is in this movie. He's he's a bit different in this movie than he is in the comics, but uh they sort of like the the conceit was all right, this this guy who is our point of view character is assigned to be an attache for Black Panther for like three days on a cultural visit, and suddenly he's just completely involved in the entire uh geopolitical madness of wakanda in this world of superheroes and it's uh and he's way overwhelmed all the time and he's pretty funny about it but um it's it's yeah this is a lot of fun and a lot of cool to, a lot of cool to see all this stuff come into life i was very mm-hmm. excited to see how they do it and they did it uh a hell of a lot of justice and i really appreciated it yes it was I, worth I, it was worth it I think and uh, like go ahead. before you even go, we even got to the movie yet. Yeah, but I just want to talk about <laughs> what it did. I mean, we're getting to the movie and the details, so yeah, we this can is all good get stuff. just questions good, answers. Yeah, but I want to know on top of what Andy is saying, like people were waiting for this, and not just people who loved comics. People who were waiting to see themselves on screen were waiting for this. So if you think back to that time and people going to the theater to see Black Panther, everyone was going like it was like a family reunion. We were picking outfits. What are you wearing? This is what I'm wearing. <laughs> I got my travel print pants on. I made my own Black Panther shirt for the movie when it came out. I wore it to work that day. <laughs> I wore it to work ready. It was ready yeah. to go. Um and it was so like every theater was full. It was hard to get a seat. I had to sit in the very first row, which is never where I sit for any movie. Mm-hmm. Um, it's too close for me. But that was the only choice I had <laughs> to see this movie. And it was so big. We were in rehearsals, rehearsing a show in Matthews. And the director was like, I know you guys all want to see this movie. Please have the day off from rehearsal and go see the movie. Like it was that big (laughs) that everything trumped what was about to happen that weekend to prep to go see this Dagon movie. Yeah, I I went to saw like a special early sneak preview thing where I got a little commemorative coin and I took my Black Panther action figure and just took pictures (laughs) all over the theater with it. I was, I was, that's how excited I was. That's a nerd. It was a to. Yes, such a nerd. It was a thing. Correct. That you call Andy rough. such a nerd. <laughs> yeah, uh, such right. a nerd. Uh, so Andy, how did you, you get that? Time. How did you get that deal where you got to see it early if you weren't working in comics anymore? Uh it was uh um I don't know, like some theater was hosting a special screening and then like you if you paid like a little bit more money, uh, you, you uh, could uh, get to go see like, like it was like are, it was right? like the first <laughs> screening, like and as soon as I got out of that screening. 
they had started screening it for everybody else. So oh, okay. I just was technically the first. You saw to... before those people did. Yeah. You were probably like hey, trying to spread the. Do it. If you word. can. Yeah. Uh, had you yeah. planned on seeing it like super, super early? I wanted to see it as soon as I could. Just because I was so happy that they were uh, I would... incorporating all these characters. That were, were you, Was there any trepidation about anyone like worrying that they were going to screw it up or it wasn't going to do it justice? Or sure, I hadn't like that, seen. Or... I don't think I'd seen well, Chadwick Boseman in anything. Here's uh, my thing: like I, other yeah, than I'd Civil had, War, so I was I guess, worried but... because all yeah, he, he had done was iconic roles. So, so for you me, knew he'd be good. Me, Chadwick, he, he, he was I'd already in Civil War. Thousand. Yeah, he was already yeah, in Civil me, War, so that's me, right. That's right. He, he was played already... Thurgood Marshall. He played Jackie Robinson. Like he had yeah, already killed it in all of those movies. So for me, I was like, yes. And then, hello, Michael B. Jordan and Lupita Nyong'o. Like, <laughs> well, see, come I, on. I've seen I had seen Fruitvale Station with Ryan. Coogler oh yes, also with Ryan. Directed. Yes. So, so Ryan kind of like you kind of go, going in, yeah, yeah. kind of going in. I yeah. like okay. It's gonna be good because also yeah, that was, was kinda, his first. I was kind of biased because going in, I'm, I'm black. So to me, like, oh, it's just I feel like it's you a are? Marvel thing, and it's, it's a black person <laughs> doing it. It's probably gonna be good, you know. We, yeah, he, he knocked on my dead this motherfucker. <laughs> no, no, no. You're right. Or I can that a verb? Forgot about Fruitville because Fruitville Station was him, and it's the first time him and Michael B. Jordan partnered up on the big screen and obviously if you look at their history now they partner up a lot yeah they're um, yeah, Creed, Creed right is what he does too uh, yeah they work together a lot Ryan knows who he wants to bring on projects <laughs> he is smart about that um but that was if you guys haven't seen Fruitville Station bring your emotions bring some tissue bring your rage yeah and watch that I'm just looking at the somehow I got into a preview of it uh like it automatically, yeah. IMDb plays videos now all the time, and I can't stop them. Uh, and it's like making my connection slower, I think. Uh, anyway, but yeah, now I want to see everything. I want to see all these things. I want to. I've fallen down a rabbit hole on the internet here with Afrofuturism. Uh, yeah, there's some beautiful the art online that I'm looking at. That well, I come on go. in. Come on. Yeah, in. I mean, it's so in. cool. So cool. I appreciate it. Don't yeah. appropriate it. Appreciate yeah, I won't it. Appro- I won't wear any of the things. I just want to see it. Like, it looks cool. I appreciate it. Like, don't but, yeah, appropriate like the for pictures. the general public. It's just art. Yeah, it's just like cool, artistic. And and this movie was very beautiful. I mean, like the uh, yes. just everything. And the, the costumes, like I said before, like and I think the craziest thing is uh, wait, where is that some of the people that are in this movie that are just have small roles, like Forrest Whitaker and Angela Bassett, they're just like afterthoughts almost. Even I mean, though they're, they're, not they're amazing, they just have small roles. I know, but like they don't speak a lot. But nobody but even talks about them. Like, I mean, it's such a great movie that you don't talk about. But I'm like Angela Bassett's in this too. <laughs> She's badass. Yeah, I Angela always Bassett. talk about Angela Bassett. I don't know where you are. Though. I mean, if she I shows could, up on a screen. I'm standing. From I could use the a, moment she appears. Yeah, I could use a little more of her, like fighting people, like kicking people. <laughs> uh, Joe just wants to see fight. I want to see Angela Bassett much. kick ass every time I see Angela Bassett. Angela Bassett yeah. was one of the, the leading content. I don't know if she was actually in contention, but like for the longest time before the, even the first X Men movie came out, everyone wanted her to play Storm. Storm, right? And she never did. No, you, but you know no. what movie she kicks butt in? God, what is that movie? She plays a librarian. There's like a group of librarians, and they all fight. Hold on. Um, um is it, it's not uh blah, 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 blah. how stella like secret agents. <laughs> how the library 355 is, 355? is no? that it where the girl was raised by her mom and her mom was friends with the three librarians i can't remember now I okay so there's this now. movie if you want to see angela bassett fight and all of the the librarians are like middle-aged women so i think it's badass that this happens but there's this woman who it's about is on the wrong side librarians? of the trying it's not about the badass librarians. It's about a woman who's hey, librarians can be badass. A hitman. She's a hitman ish, and I think her target is like a kid or so- someone she can't kill, or someone that is something happens, and so now she's in crosshairs, and so she goes to the only place she can find comfort, which is her mother's old co-workers who work in this big ass library. There's three women, and they fight people off and i don't mean like little fight 
it would make you proud, Joe, if you want to see Angela Bassett kick some ass. That's a movie. I'm gonna find it and tell you, but that's where you see Angela. Gun, gunpowder milkshake. Yep, that's it. Yeah, okay, so yeah. It's otherwise known as Sweet Librarian's Badass Song. I uh, mean, they're not in the whole movie. They come towards the end. But I just Google if you want to see her Angela fight Bassett, and like fight as a badass. Yeah, I want to see everything. Yeah. Angela Bassett's just always great. So. I don't know. So She's I think that was wonderful. one of the things. I was just like, Angela Bassett needs to, like, we need to all shut up and just let her talk. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but she's... I mean, you got to give yeah, that I, note to your people who have been standing Angela Bassett since the dawn of time. Have been standing? Standing. Like, stand, like, the, the new kid's word of stan stan i don't know if it's new but like i stand <laughs> well you know you could also think stan eminem like i thought yeah it's from eminem right i thought you're saying standing you stand no for, the I phrase in the theater you stood up and every time she's on the on no, the no. screen and I was like, well that'd get annoying in the front row in that movie he no. must have been like sit down uh, <laughs> no joe the funny. word Standing, stand. I stand. No, you don't standing. Like I stand. I'm still learning the young kids' uh, lingo. That's a young one, Joe. I feel like that's an old one. It is. Maybe it is. I think it's. I mean, I Uh, say a lot of words, but I don't think that one. It's within the last five years or so. I think. Andy, Uh, take your shirt. Maybe it's like you're beyond a regular fan. Like you, you were a mega fan. Like you. That's yes. I I get it. If Angela Bassett came to town, yeah, I'm dropping everything. You are a stand. I stand. I if she comes on the screen, I'm shutting up. I've well, watched every yeah. movie. If you say Angela Bassett is in this, even for five seconds, I'm going to watch it. I stand. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So she was great. Yeah. I can't remember why I brought that. I wasn't saying oh, you were noting how many people had smaller roles. Oh, and I just say, yeah, how many people are in this? Yeah. I mean, besides, I mean, Chadwick Boseman and Michael Jordan, B. Jordan together. I, I was just when I was watching those guys fight, I was like, who would TBJ choose out of these two guys? We got Mr. Ster- Mr. Sterling is you know, he has a bit piece in it. Uh both Sterling for K, different uh both for different fuck, reasons. What's his last name? Sterling K. Brown. Yeah. And Denzel yes. Wed- uh, Well, and then Winston yeah, Duke. Hello. Really <laughs> Hello. Um, yeah, yeah. That is she one of my favorite things. Have a harem, okay? She would just have brother husbands <laughs> at this point. <laughs> if we had to do this, there would just be brother husbands. But I do want to talk. While this movie had a bunch of small roles or mm-hmm. smaller roles for big name people, it also gave people who never like the older woman. There's an older woman who is throughout the scene, but she does have a speaking line or two in the. Um, fight scene for his title that lady is like in her 80s and has never acted in her life really like showed up to an audition to like (laughs) be a part of something and there she is so it gave everyday people a chance to like shine i love that old woman uh every time she made it like because they kept on what do the elders think you know and they would show her and i'm like yeah i i want to know what she thinks you know like i'd love to know more about the the dynamics there's the merchant tribe the river yes. tribe the uh yeah. the Jabari, i feel like the, they could do so uh, many the border tribe with all Wakabi. i think yeah. me and andy yesterday we was talking and i was you know this is kind of jumping but then like how how uh nakia ended up pregnant kind of thing and it was like oh, i couldn't recall whether or not spoiler alert for the, <laughs> spoiler <laughs> for for the next watch. movie i guess i can't i can't recall whether or not that there was like a prequel comic to this book Sort of like how they did with uh, Black Widow. So you could have like little things like that where you get to see things that on the outskirts of the main city in Wakanda where you see like the other different tribes and you get to see more of the Border Patrol and and all of this. So um, it's like it's one of those things where it's like you wonder if like let's say if the novelization of this movie, if that had like, you know, some expansion on to things like that in this movie. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, this is yeah. But I mean, there's there's plenty of time for that to have happened, but uh, just off camp because you know they had to make a lot of uh, adjustments mm-hmm. with uh, uh, Chadwick Boseman's unfortunate uh, end, I guess. But 
Yeah, no. But we don't want to spoil that yet. You're going to confuse no, I'm Joe. All right, do not. Confuse. I mean, yeah, I, I don't think my brain can. Take I was just talking about world building in general. In the yes, black. but then you, you brought up that one specific thing. That, that, that's going to be that's going to come a time. <laughs> that's going to come a time when we're going to do these things, and Joe's going to be like, "Oh fuck yeah, I don't know what you guys are talking about." You well, I mean, do, you don't have to dumb it down for me. We, we are recording anymore. We are recording this on a day where we got two big pieces of Marvel news. I think, like, I don't know if it's they were both today, but the one is we heard that uh, Art's favorite Liv Tyler ah. is going to be coming back, or is going to be coming back as Betsy Betsy Ross, Betty Ross, <laughs> Betty Ross. He pulled the Art Star. She ain't making no flag. Betsy flags. had the flag. I did, and was no I might have did that on purpose. Betsy but, was the racist flag maker. But my question, I guess, on that, so the, that these are side things that bring up questions. But since it's big news today, that, but but she wasn't in a Hulk with um, uh, Mark Ruffalo yet. She's not Ruffalo. been in a movie with Mark. She's only in that one with more Edward. than one. She's with Hulk a different Hulk. Version. Yes. So is that going to screw up things and universes and whatever? No. Uh, William know, Hurt has been in multiple. Oh, movies. William Hurt was in. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then the other. And big now news... William Hurt is going to be Harrison Ford. <laughs> William Hurt is dead, so they had to recast that role. Oh, and Harrison William Ford's going to play him. So Indiana yeah. Jones is done to vote William Hurt died. You ever just forget somebody died completely? And then, mm-hmm. like, it was big news, and then you forget? Like, yeah, William the Hurt. The opposite of that is I could have sworn that guy was dead 20 yeah, years ago. Already. Like, Abe Vigoda, the Abe Vigoda watch that was going on forever. There used to be a website just dedicated to it was just like, is Abe Vigoda alive.com and it for years it just said yes and then now it says no <laughs> <It's> like uh <laughs> because he finally did die but um oh the and then the other thing is this guy playing kang just got in trouble but i think i'm hearing now that maybe it's false allegations maybe oh um, and so they say um he there is video evidence that it didn't happen so we'll see how that plays out jonathan majors um, this is what I major. This is what I was thinking about when I saw that. It's like you you don't want to believe it, but then it's also you you look at it, you step back and you say, like, man, this dude, he hasn't like he's been slowly but surely, you know, growing. And like now at the height, almost at the I don't want to say at the height, like when he's at his most most popular, it's like to have something like this, almost like even if it's false it's like it kind of i don't want to say it tarnishes him but it also gives him this this like you you, you people him. associate it right so now it tarnishes him. it even it if he's innocent him, but... yeah. it becomes a subconscious association of his name with that right you know, which isn't fair to him but then on the other side i feel like it's not fair for people like i'm guilty of this sometimes of uh not wanting to believe it so bad that i almost do, you know i oh i believe that's not, fair to the, that's not fair to the woman yeah but I, generally i always believe it because i'm always like yeah because every guy I, you can asshole. come to me tomorrow and say this person you know and love did this thing and i'd be like i hate that that is the case like i won't you would yes. never see me going oh no he would never because but then you also realize that i learned he, about that the world we live in People do some horrible things yeah. that you don't see coming. Yeah. So I always err on the side of, dang, I don't understand why he did that. They did. Um, yeah. and I, then, I've come around to you, that. Like yeah. B- Bill Cosby was the biggest thing for me. I it was like world his. chattering. That was world chattering for me. And it took me a, like I had to break my whole thing down in my brain. A lot of people did. I did not take that. Not, that long. not to equate things like that, but like it's also for Bill Cosby, it's one of those things where it's like it's been eons and then it's all of a sudden maybe there were people who knew but didn't you know believe but then when it comes out like by this time you've already oh people grown know yeah, people but, like that right but but most people have already grown up with picture pages and mr jello pudding and all of that so it's yeah. like it's, it's, oh, picture it's pages like whoa well, to, to some people like jonathan majors it's like okay this uh, to some people this dude was just becoming a star Right, yeah. Yeah. Bill yeah. Cosby was 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 a star and beyond. Years. So it comes power so, thing, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's it's really like holy shit. Where like Jonathan Major is like, okay, did he? Do, but then you like I, like the next day, it was someone else said something else. So then you start to have the uh the pile on effect. 
So then it's yeah. like, is it real or is it not real? Then everybody comes out of the woodwork. Oh, he did this to me once. You know, it's like, oh, like why did someone? Like, I guess, what, once like, what was it on on Lovecraft Country? They were saying how he was kind of, you know, I don't want to say belligerent, but he was kind of like a problem on Lovecraft Country. Like Lovecraft Love Country. Before. This one I wanted to ask. Well, the thing is, and I think I'm hold on. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Thought, Joe, go before ahead. Yeah, we yeah. go anywhere else, no, we I don't, don't have know to <laughs> that our natural instinct, a lot of people's natural instinct, who have never had to live through experiences, is to not to believe. But I will challenge you with the stats of the world that more people who believe they did it in the world because if you knew the stat just for my day job and working with children the stats mm. of these instances that most of these people are um accused of are atrocious when i say atrocious the stats are the stats and these are american stats like these are not in universe these are right here in our own little country mm. uh just side note it's not the drag queens you need to worry about okay uh, 90 percent of the time is not strangers you need to worry about but the stats are so atrocious that i find that you actually have more people who do actually believe but the vocal people who are like there are still people out here trying to free r kelly girl that stuff was on oh, video yeah. okay yeah that's like <laughs> give it up he made a beautiful song a couple times it does not excuse it does not excuse yeah. literal trauma um yeah. that people but, have to yeah. uncover People. And the thing is, people knew, people have always known, because we live in a society, we live, this society was built on males and patriarchy, and we've done the boys will be boys, and creative geniuses will be creative geniuses, and he's just letting off self-esteem, and I think we, when people are like, why did it wait too long, I think we are just coming into a world, one, we've all just got therapy these days, but also people are going, no, no, that doesn't work anymore. And they're releasing information on what's happening now and what happened before, because they no longer have to hide that stuff. It doesn't control them anymore. Yeah. I think that, that's my soapbox. Yeah. I'm going to step off it now. No, that's kind of it. So you have to come to realization that two things can be true. Somebody can make beautiful art and, and, and you say can be a creative and genius and, and be, a trash and, human. Yeah. <laughs> and have done horrible <laughs> things. Like, yeah, yeah. multiple things can be true, and that's that's the hard thing. Is nothing. Everything's not just that person's good. That person's bad. Well, that person's you no know, donated a million dollars to save orphanages. But he also I mean, I'm good, people. Joe. I'm great. You I'm are good though. through through. Except this is the out. dark side of standing. Is yeah. that you? You yes. have to be able to step back from right. your standship, your standhood, yep. your standliness. Yeah. You have yeah, to see people wanna... as humans, yeah, and we have yeah. we have put the we have put interesting people on pedestals, and they are human. They are just humans with human flaws, and we are flawed AF as humans, mm -hmm. and people cannot see it sometimes in a major way. And don't let it be du dudes have the worst time seeing other dudes uh, be trash. There's times when I back I've... to male fragility. Well, I don't know. That's a whole other thing. I'd... Uh, it's like a philosophical philosophical thing i've thought about like i've heard somebody praising somebody they knew that does this many things, what great things and what well, wonderful and i've known things about that person that's not so great but i just yeah shut up because but why is it also noting just let that person, let that person be happy yeah. and think about it what's it going to do to let that person know you know, uh, um, well, it depends on what they did because I will yeah. spill the tea. <laughs> but like, I oh, think... that motherfucker trash human. No matter how I'm much, like, is that true? Cool. That, that TikTok guy trend? might that so seem cool, but he ate my schnitzel. My schnitzel is <laughs> in the fridge. I was like, marked that's my interesting name. that you find art friendly. That's real interesting. Wow. That art is great. Uh, in my wow. opinion, here are all wow. the ways you sabotage my life. Do you know he's a Sith? Yeah. I do tell people that. Oh, yeah. I have told many of people that when I'm sitting next to him and they say Recognize nice things, and I go, but is he nice? Me. Is he nice? And I, because he don't talk to that many people, sometimes they just yeah. think he's a nice, friendly guy. Well, no, people don't think he even can talk. Like, right. He doesn't talk. Oh, yeah, he never. Sometimes he never shuts up. <laughs> Get a couple of drinks oh, in him man. and uh, put him on a podcast. Uh -oh. There are people like he talks to you. I know we literally talk to each other. One, we are a team who talk all the time and it's recorded but two we've always talked you just have to have certain things to talk to them about right okay so right, this so is that small talk shit directed by <laughs> ryan coogler uh you guys briefly mentioned him real quick but 
and I was just kind of thrown in there. Oh, he directed it. But uh, you guys, everyone here was aware of already of Ryan Coogler before Black Panther. Yeah, yes. the guy was not aware of anything. But yeah, so I think he, he did. He did Jodo he first Creed no before shit. this, didn't he? Oh, was Creed before the first Creed had come out? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I think so, so. Fruitville Station is the first time he was ever on my radar. I oh, will note that my that. original intention was Michael B. Jordan, and then <laughs> through Michael B. Jordan, um, oh, sorry, there was lots of like afraid. interviews oh. with Ryan Coogler about his process. That I was like, oh, look. oh. What? Yeah, my first priority is always uh, going to be a Michael oh, B. Jordan. We were just yeah. pausing for the dramatic effect of yeah, yeah. PBJ standing over, not standing, standing spawn in him. Over I, lust, I lust a lot over him. You're not a stand status because he he's spawns still a over him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Judas, uh, Judas and the Black Messiah. Did you guys all see that? Yes. That's been a yeah. thing on my list. Is that, do I, what should I see first? That. Uh, Bell Station. Yeah, go Real, to the for, beginning. For, for, okay, well, it'll be nice to start there, and then you watch how his films shift and change, and what they have in common. Okay, if you really are looking into. It. Yeah, new thing I want to do, and I think I've probably mentioned this on here before. Is like I want to watch directors work, like in order, like together to like yeah watch for that to rather than just process. I'm always so focused on actors, and like watching the actors work, and and I want to be more of like a. Well, even even like directors. like how if if you read if you're reading comics, like a lot of times people tend to always you know get drawn by the art of the comic books, but then like you know me and Andy, we always talk about like some writers are amazing writers. Like yeah. so, then you you just want to start trying to find everything that this person wrote. You know, not just uh, oh, he's it- on this book. I'm only going to read this book, but like, no, I want to see what else he wrote. Is I want to see what else Donny Cates. Is it weird or jarring to see an uh, uh, an artist work with different uh, illustrators so that like the, the drawings might be completely different, but it's the same writer and you can still recognize that? That That's pretty much standard in comics. You're not going to get like even like this, for example, Priest, uh, this Black Panther run, the Marvel yeah. Knights run that was that, you know, formed the basis of a lot of this film uh, when it was out uh it, like they were it was a big effort the marvel knights was a way to like take some characters that weren't uh selling so much like daredevil and uh, i think moon oh, knight and punisher and wait, stuff like marvel that knights was a, a, a like a series comic of series. comics it, it was like an like they took uh like this made the sort of a, an imprint like an umbrella of well we're gonna, we're gonna bring these new hot writers on and artists and creators and team them together on these characters that haven't really it's kind of like the ultimates been, is a thing like it's that type right. of umbrella type of thing. yeah it was it's sort of like uh, mostly they were like street level characters like uh because back then it was like x-men are everything right uh and um and but this wasn't like avengers stuff but it was like trying to just focus on these uh unique characters and give them a higher profile and i guess probably make them sort of movie ready by yeah like, more marketable and all that yeah yeah and uh, but this series was it was part of that and it was a big publicity thing and like the the daredevil series from uh, joe casada at that point was kind of went off black panther this was always kind of it, it ran like 50 some issues but it was always sort one of those things that was kind of on the cusp we were always like oh is it gonna get canceled it's gonna get canceled is it not selling well enough and uh, like the original artist on it was a guy named Mark Texera who did this really great watercolory paint style. Uh, but he something happened and he left at issue seven, and then they just had to keep. And you're looking for a team, like a, a synergy between like the writing and the art. And Priest even talked about it. I read a lot of interviews with him where he was like he was trying to gear the story towards what the artist is good at or likes to draw or how they like to do things and really? what their style is. Gosh, that's something I would have never even thought of once mm-hmm. like that. Somebody would do. I mean, not everybody does it. Some writers yeah. will just go, you draw yeah. this. Yeah, I'm do what I want. Yeah, do what I say. But yeah, yeah they give but, the and he had some issues control. because there was some, like they had to do some subs, like, Oh, we need an artist to fill in on this to meet a deadline or whatever like that. And so like he, there was something in like the teens of this run. Like he wrote this really dialogue heavy, uh, sequence like a lot of uh what's the word not introspection um 
anal beads? No, the, <laughs> what's uh, what looking for? <laughs> exposition. That's the word. Oh. Um, and but it was the artist on that issue was a lot more like dynamic, almost uh, cartoony style. And it didn't like, it was just like half the panels was like him running. And then like a giant word text of like half the panel was filled up with that. And it was like, he was talked about how that wasn't the, quite the right mesh of style. Cause he would have written differently knowing the artist is on the book. So that's just part of the creative process. And so yeah, it's like, it's, I mean, there are some writers that work, with the same artists over and over because they like it they like the they, collaboration yeah yeah i'm sure like with anything you have like and the artists do uh, as much creation yeah. as the writers do because yeah. uh, the artists have to render everything yeah it's like part of the thing stan lee gets a lot of the credit for creating all the characters but jack kirby did a lot of the heavy lifting to yeah. make them i mean stan lee them. said what it was but then he drew this thing and became well that's a lot of controversy behind that book on um, Stan was really his need to be the one that created it or be right. listed, even though he wasn't he always. Lit. And then mm-hmm. he's, he's not the only creator that had that, especially like Bob Kane, creator of Batman. Uh, there's, a, there's a funny comic strip out there that is just like, what if Bob Kane actually created Batman without all the stuff that <laughs> Bill Finger created? And it was just like, he's a dumb blonde guy in a little domino mask and like a, some fake bat wings and a little red outfit that's it <laughs> that's all bob kane did but he for the longest time he muscled bill finger out of there and he like demanded to be credited as the sole creator of batman all the time really and, there's like and, a uh, whole battle about that about yeah who- there's a documentary uh on i think it was on hulu and i can't remember the name of it but it was about it was basically remember, finally giving right. bill finger his due there's not enough there's bill also finger. a book there's a book about it <laughs> yeah there's not enough time in the in my lifetime like i'm not going to be able to get to all the things i want to watch and see beauty of it joe is you don't have to right you just take in what and you, you don't have to do it all at once yeah there's well, not gonna be a big checklist at the end no said, oh as y'all, much you didn't as see this documentary you, there's I, no I just want to know at the end of everything. I want to see this. everything that's ever happened. Everything and Every all times in it. Right. Well, that's all the more reason for someone to sponsor us. Rub on art time need to fund us. So Joe <laughs> oh, can retire. Did you say people. Oh, rub, did. rub on art's thigh meat? <laughs> yeah, that's what I Art's gonna get a sugar spouse and then that really right. TBJ really rolled us. off your tongue very quickly, like it's been right. there. Well, we for I a think while. we had a discussion. This, this a couple of weeks ago. Oh, you, we always we had, we had a discussion our, our a couple of weeks meat? ago about, about your her meat? going out. No, about oh. her going outside showing me shaking my thigh meat. Yeah, some oh. buyer. But she said she didn't have on the right outfit or something. And I told her to show the right, outfit. the proper amount of thigh meat. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't. Have, it wouldn't have caught us the sponsor we needed. I feel like the more we say thigh meat. It, the weirder it sounds, thigh meat. Wait, you guys have said weirder things on this. Podcast, oh, I know. Yeah, so. we have totally. It's just like it's just like the words together. Like maybe it's, it's also meat. because TBJ said it. Oh, and I don't. Yeah, I don't also thick guys. Say 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 she won't say excelsior, yeah. but she'll say thigh meat. <laughs> Because one day this thigh meat is about to pay for us. Okay. Big time. Okay. <laughs> uh, get on the train. Oh boy. And then I just learned recently somebody was telling me thick with two C's has a different meaning than thick with C K E. Like thick thick. Alan thick. Yeah, everything <laughs> means something else that's not Alan thick, but <laughs> with two Most C's. Thick it's like, is not Alan thick. Yeah. Oh, man. Thick is like a, a heavier set person who you're into. That's those two uh, C's. These thighs right here. She thick fit. isn't good. Thick, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. We this is are a different kind of podcast now. An hour into this, and we haven't even gotten to the movie yet. Where we started, but well, we did say it was probably oh, be a three part. Uh, things around the movie. Yeah, there's a lot to discuss. Fine. I mean, this we don't. We're not going to gloss over or hurry through because. We, you guys have been talking about this and building up to this from you, you the say beginning. We, but you've been excited about seeing this movie. Oh, I really or have. And honestly, this, I thought I had seen this before. Like, I swear I went and saw it in the theater, but I didn't remember any of this. And I think I was saving it for this, you know, like knowing it, understanding it. And because mm-hmm. I think. Wasn't this out close to about the time we started doing this? I don't know what year we started doing. Oh no, I guess it was pandemic. Mm, we started in 2019. We started 2019. pre-pandemic. 
It That's came crazy. out in 2018. It's, but it's, you and Andy had been talking about doing something like this way before you brought Art and I in. So we had been. We were talking about, about this for. But I'm. What I will say is, if I did see it, it's a sad state of affairs that my memory is as bad as it is. Like there was like two <laughs> scenes that seemed familiar to me. We're gonna get you a baloba for your brain, <laughs> but. But I I do feel like now that you guys are like teaching me how to pay attention sort of and like Mm -hmm. watch something and being in the moment rather than just mind wandering, blah, blah, blah. Oh, explosions and fights. Cool. Forget it. I know. You know what? But I'm like understanding what, why people are doing what they're doing and who they are in the timeline now that I feel like I'm retaining more of it now than I did then. So maybe I watched it uh, because I kind of remember Michael B. Jordan in that, that yellow Black Panther thing, the, the black and yellow thing. And then I kind of remember this sounds weird, but that like, but maybe this reappears somewhere, but like the post credit scene where uh, they show that, what's his name? White Wolf or whatever was, Bucky. was yeah, Bucky Sebastian. was there. But well, they, like, I think they might have re, they might have put that into the uh, Falcon Winter Soldier show. So maybe I knew it from that. And maybe I saw the yellow panther. Well, there's also the part where uh, the other um, stuff we watched. It's def- you definitely got some of it from Falcon and Winter Soldier because remember the door Milage came and basically took the damn arm and did the thing with a disconnected oh, arm. You yeah, that? that's what I think I'm thinking of. So maybe I didn't even see this movie. Maybe I didn't <laughs> even see it. This is uh, one you would remember unless you were I just would totally stressed this. out of your mind. Because this was so good that I feel like I would have remembered a lot of it. Uh, cause it was great. Like I said, it was great, but it was like a brand new movie to me, but I will say a lot of movies are like a brand new movie to me. If there's two <laughs> years, there's a year between it. Like I That's just true. don't have the brain capacity to retain <laughs> things. Like I, I, I yeah. people will show me videos or things I've said that I don't remember ever saying it. Somebody brought yeah. it to me, uh, somebody. So we just did the nerdy night show on Saturday and somebody who was at the January show, just two months ago, you know, said, oh, it's good to see you again. I was like, I haven't seen you in years. Like, we were at the January show. You came and spoke to us. <laughs> and I was like, oh, <laughs> Joe. I did? So maybe. So kind of another reason why I'm doing these podcasts and trying to record as much as possible is, like, I have a feeling I might, like, have early Alzheimer's or something, and I might be just Don't gone. put that in the universe. I don't want to, but I have a feeling. Like, I'm, that's my biggest It feeling. could like, just be also mean that you have so much in your mind. That you That's forget true. things. I might be doing yeah. too much. Like I, like I'll, I'll try. Like you be doing too much. I get tongue tied a lot sometimes when I'm either like I'm thinking something, thinking something else, but I'm trying to say something, so it comes out, and like I literally hear myself either say the wrong thing, or like, and I'm like, fuck damn it! Like I got Tourette's or something because the word I want to say doesn't come out because five <laughs> other things are trying to come out. So it's just yeah. one of those things where, like, I like to call it. Well, I used to always say it's a part of me having OBS, which is only boy syndrome. So it's like I had oh. all these things going on in my mind at one time, and I'm like, oh, you like you're really hype, really hype, 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 hype. Like, oh shit, oh shit, I gotta <laughs> say this, you know. So, and and I think as I've gotten older, that's where can I say something comes from, you know? Because like, I say if this? I don't. If I don't get it out, I know like eight other things are going to try to come out at the same time, and I'm going to be way off about something. And then but I'm hearing when I'm way you. off about something, and I will be there to kick me in the balls. You in the balls? He gently corrects you. Gently. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like gently like, corrects you. I feel like he likes kind of Rochambeauing me a lot. <laughs> yeah, he kind of has sometimes has a art star condescending tone to him uh like <laughs> it's, it's a condescending tone just for art yeah Andy, he pull, Andy pulls that down for art. i don't know if any knows what he's doing but i feel like he, he does <laughs> every once in a while it's like a, <laughs> i don't know like let me punch him straight in the ball <laughs> i'm glad that art you have obs and not opp i was thinking uh <laughs> or not ibs hopefully or not. ibs which oh, my grandmother no ibs over here Lord, we're not my, gra- my grandmother would today pop we are, we are not like, yeah, we're not, we're not going to talk about we, food today. Should we try to jump into the movie a little bit? Like we started with the director and the writers. Uh, we got to. Well, I feel like we've been on here an hour. Created. If we start on the movie, we have been. Should I we like just? This should deserves... be just the pre, the pre and the two news things that we talked about. Like uh, we talked about, Liv Tyler. Is that a good movie thing? Chats. 
yeah the pre-movie chat i mean it has been an hour so this could this is an and episode. We, I mean, we, yeah we and that way we can it. start we, fresh we, on the, the actual movie this is the run-up the i will run be up. glad too because i'll give me a chance to. i like to see yeah. it a couple times before we talk about it uh and i just barely yes. got through it um that's fine. I have this a, is our pre-show, everybody. A ton of questions. This is like a Black about Panther pre-show. Vibranium, like, is Vibranium insert sponsor here? This has been been around forever. Is Vibranium new to the MCU, or is that been in the comics too? Like, is that the uh, yeah. Vibranium was we, we first mentioned that? in, uh, I believe, uh, in the sixties? Because the whole Captain thing America, that... uh, Captain America's shield in the MCU is made out of Vibranium, but they didn't mention Wakanda until uh, the Avengers movie. No, right. Age of what Ultron. I'm saying is, is it was it in comics before it was in the like did the MCU? Oh yeah, yeah vibranium yeah. thing up, but it, but the vibranium's yeah. always been the thing that is how uh, Wakanda got its power, right? Because it was an that's the, the like the Black Panther origin story, back origin story, yeah, Lee Kirby '66. Uh, yeah. That's when Claw was introduced as well as like the villain. It was basically Wakanda's built. Uh, on vibranium the way it's explained in the movie right and like they have this secret that only they have in the whole world except um there's different flavors of vibranium like in antarctica and stuff like that but that's neither here nor there uh but then claw was like an ivory hunter kind of guy like the classic he had like a shitty uh chin strap beard like very colonial looking kind You're of talking guy. About the comics he looked like a in the comics Ulysses Claw. Sure. he was very much a colonizer and yeah, yeah. uh he was he like was stealing vibranium like mining vibranium in africa and then like they Which? tried to stop him and then like he set off this like weird sound cannon thing and like killed a whole shit ton of people including uh killmonger's father and jobu that's how jobu died in the in the, in the, the comics because the claw wasn't that whole yeah this hell backstory they've done right here uh, yeah, like things are a little different, but it, yeah. it's a little tidier in the movie. But uh, and then in T'Challa, that was when T'Challa was like eight years old. He sees his father and like thirty of his countrymen die at the hands of Claw, and it becomes oh. this thing that T'Challa has to become. So that's the boy very king. different in this because yeah. his because he's not a boy king. He's a, right, right, a man king. But that's like a very and his uh, Ramonda is not in the comics. T'Challa's mother. He's Shuri's mother. But he's oh. T'Challa's stepmother, uh, because okay. T'Challa's birth mother is Niami, and she hasn't somehow that she was pretty much completely ignored as a character until yeah. like she she had a no speaking role until 2018 comics. <laughs> so really, uh, it was just she was just kind of like, oh, this she's was, not in this. She's not in no, the MCU. No, oh. in no, this, in the Ramana. MCU, his mom is Angela Bassett. Oh yeah, it's right. A, yeah, the, who's sure Ramonda? So they're yeah. like actual brother and sister in this. Right, right, and you know, Shuri wasn't introduced until 2005 by uh, Reginald oh, really? Hedlund and uh, John Romita Jr. Yeah, he, she just kind of came out of nowhere. And I remember at the time, I was really so invested in the priest run that he was leaving and handing it off to, or like they were canceling it, basically. And uh, because they tried to revamp some things with uh, some new characters and stuff that didn't quite pan out. And then suddenly uh, Reginald Hudlin comes on and like immediately, suddenly he has a little sister that has never been mentioned before ever. And I just like, from that issue, I was like, eh, I don't know if I'm going to like this. I, I didn't read I won't know that one. Shuri has two YA books written by YA superstar um, Nick Stone, which are very good. If you have a young person interested in her point of view and just stem, I think it's nice to see a badass. So are you saying stemness. the character Shuri? Yes. Or so after oh. what Andy is saying that Shuri didn't come out until the early 2000s. Yeah. In the, in the last few years, they've also just pumped her up. Um, oh, cool. Into it's, her own YA series, so yeah, she has a YA. It, series. Yeah. I think there's two books that like have a been young out. adult book. So yeah. there's there's like these young adult books using Marvel characters. Yeah, yeah. Same right, thing with Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Oh, there yeah, are there novels, are so many yeah. Star Wars books. Yeah, all those. Yeah, and is it canon? Yeah. Like, is do they have the whole thing in in Marvel with the, whether they call it canon and all this continuity, like continuity, or or do yeah. they not? Yeah, um, it's it's fits flexible. into the world. It just doesn't follow things. Because the M- not the MCU, like them. That's why the MCU is different. Because that's the cinematic thing. Yeah, it has its own but continuity. Star Wars doesn't yeah. that have? Yeah, Star Wars has you know canonical and non non canonical, but it, then they also yeah like, as they're as they're thinking about redoing them and adding more, they're like trying to pull in older Star Wars lore 
Okay. But then, and, but it's also it, it ends up being like I said earlier, like world building. So like right yeah. now, I'm actually reading Shadow of the Sith. Yes, of course, a of Sith course. would read a book about Sith. But of it's like you, you know, you're you're reading about the characters who are from that universe doing they're do, they're having other adventures, but in some somewhere along the line, they kind of sort of tie back in sometimes to canon. Like if you watch Clone Wars, like some of the shit that happens in Clone Wars, you know, you start to get from other shit like before the Battle of Yan was it Yanvin? Yanvin? Yavin. Yeah. So it's like you get shit like that. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> how do you how know do Yavin? Know? Well, because they uh, that's how they measure uh yeah, it's like before, time is like BY and ABY. Instead uh, of BC it's B B Y Yeah and then the that Battle gets really then it really my son me. tells me about all this now. He's teaching yeah, it really, me. It really, it really gets deep. But then some of the stuff still ends up slowly but surely becoming part of canon. Yeah. So maybe you know, it might might now it might not be necessarily Rangers. canon or part of continuity. But then who knows five years from now when some other writer picks up like, hey, like yeah, let's bring in elements of this. Like I mean, there are plenty of characters that were created purely for like like uh. Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn was made for the Batman, um, the animated series. And from that, she ended up in the comics. Mm-hmm. Uh, F- F- Felicia. What was her name? Felicia. Bye, Felicia. Felicia Hardy. Felicia. Black Cat. Uh, I forget the fucking chick. Are you talking about Firestar? Look, look, Firestar look, in Spider Man and his finish, Amazing bro. Friends. Let me finish, bro. Spider I'm jumping. Woman I'm jumping all over. He's he trying to help you, and you ready to fight up, he, he, I'm not even talking about Firestar. That's what I'm saying. But so, he was trying to help you, and you. It was an F him. word. It was and, an F Andy, name. Andy wasn't helping me. Andy you was came on his hard path. At him, though. He was and on his path to help you. Andy was on his path to you course. You just want to fight people on today. his path right. to course. Correct. I, I was trying to hurts. We've talked about so many different things, and I keep getting off track. On Arrow, on Arrow, Felicity from Arrow created for the Arrow universe. They introduced her into the comics from the Arrow Universe show. Like she wasn't a comic character. So you have these these instances where people, where it may not be a part of the work, the comic world, or the MCU at this moment, but these stories that are being written or have been written at some point along the lines and the timeline, it may make be their way they'll get in. introduced into it. Yeah. They're still licensed work under the whole umbrella. So let right. me know sure, while Shuri isn't the the two books aren't a part of the MCU necessarily yet. Who knows now that she's taken over, right? What they will turn into. But it she still has the writer still has to get okayed by Marvel <laughs> to write what she's writing. She's not like freelancing a Shuri book. I think the right. hardest thing for me to get through this mo- movie was so many of these characters uh Nakia and Shuri and Killmonger and Claw and are all in Marvel Snap. So every time I'm watching, every time they say a name, I'm like, oh yeah, I wanted to I just like get this urge to like <laughs> play Marvel Snap and I have to like pause it and like I gotta play a quick round Marvel Snap because I let me, let me pull out a Koye. I, I gotta pull out a Koye and Killmonger and, and all at the same time and then Black Panther going what kind of forever every time and so I mean, there's just so many of them, and it's just I think that app that game has done what they want it to do. It just infiltrates in your brain. So when you're what you hear those names, you gotta play it. You know, you just gotta <laughs> and so and, and it gives you a base. Like uh uh my wife is playing Marvel Snap a lot too, and I think she's getting more familiar with Marvel characters. It helps in general. you know more characters and like them more and see all this different art that they have of each one too. And I'm like so like oh, and then when I see him on screen, I'm like, I know that character. I know who Ibaku <laughs> is. I've seen him before. And so it's like a familiarity or something. Ooh, like, ooh. ooh yeah, I love Mbaku, right. and I had no idea. And, and this yeah, this I'm, version of Mbaku is just such a great way to translate what was sort of a problematic character uh, into making it a great character because uh, he was originally Man Ape created yeah. in uh, 1969 oh. uh, in Avengers number 62. He was a straight up sort of uh, Wakandan villain, uh, but he dressed up in a big white gorilla outfit and all the time. And uh, and this one, like they had the mask when he showed up, 
and they had like the, oh, the right he had that the, mask that he put on the, yeah the fur on his back or the, like the chalk powder and stuff yeah they implied that without making Being it racist super, yeah, yeah basically super trying dumb to, trying to de-racify but he was like the whole idea was like they're the clan of the white gorilla and like they're sort of an outlaw cult in wakanda but he's just uh, very defiant but like in the comics like he had been in uh, the masters of evil and the lethal legion he's just been like a pretty much straight up villain although i think priests started giving him some shades there and uh but this movie really and which was great because comic nerds know him as a villain so every time he's like challenging uh t'challa or like the dying and stuff like that it's like yeah this is in line i so you're pretty sure he's not going to show up at the end there at the yeah, help so anyway i am twist. not going to that help you we will eat for you. nerds yeah it was like it basically when he says i'm just kidding we were a vegetarian that kind of yeah. changed the game for him. <laughs> i love that part yeah up until that great. point yeah they might eat everett ross <laughs> but <laughs> yeah yeah then he's like all right this is that's when the character is twisted and then becomes one of your favorites because yeah. he's fucking great and i think shuri is one of my favorite people in this whole thing like she's like yeah. Kind of like similar to the star uh Spider-Man thing, the 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 guy in the chair or whatever. Like she's the mm. like oh, doing everything with the tech. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's so cool. And she's like she's the brain funny kinda or something. Like there's something about her that's like she's silly kinda. And I remember like when this movie first came out, I was just consuming everything about it I could. And there was a trend for a while of just people recording themselves doing that opening Mbaku speech. We have watched from the mountains. While your technological advances, like just his, uh, just insulting everybody in Wakanda before yeah. the challenge, like people were just so happy to have that character. I, I was funny. obsessed with. I there was like four hundred of them, and it was, it was just a lot of fun to watch everyone. Yeah. And that. and as Andy says it, he's such a fucking nerd. But that's okay. <laughs> yeah. That's okay because that's why right. we're here. Do you need that's a nap? Like, what do you need? Because yeah. I feel like this entire episode is just coming at Andy. I feel like... I feel Did like, you say something? Where, 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 listen, where is this? Where is this when Andy attacks me? Oh. Or he attacks Ew. Joe. Where is that at? When he can attack Joe. Home? That's sibling stuff. Okay? <laughs> they, they can do that stuff. That's deep-rooted... That's uh, they grew up yeah. in a household. But, but Andy brought an action figure to the movie theater. I did. Oh, podcast I, is full of nerds. It's I, literally I but take Art Star as an insult. Art Star oh, brings listen, action figures I was, to work. I was I was fucking with Andy for with, with love. That was out, that was, <laughs> was out of love. nerd love. It was like a nerd. You seem very combative I, today. It was, it was listen, listen. If I was standing right beside Andy right now, when I said you know what I would have did, I would have punched him in the nut. <laughs> <laughs> and you know why? That's what guys do to each other. We punch oh, yeah. each other to nuts. And they'd be, no, they'd be one sure guy in wrestling. seventh no. grade did that. And I hated him for it. Yeah, I didn't but, like the guys that would sack you. I didn't like that either. Yeah, I don't know what that would deal was. I had to tell a person as an adult, a friend of mine, when I was in my 30s, and I had to say, I don't like that when you do that. And uh, I know you think it's funny, but I don't want to hang out with you anymore because you do that. And then he stopped doing that. Uh, and so then I hung out with him. Somewhere. I don't know who that is. It was Brian McCartney. Oh, okay. You just put his whole name out there. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> put it right out. He, he'll admit it. We talk about it a lot, but he's not going to listen to this. But yeah, he would, but, yeah, he would just the, sack me every once in a while. And I'd be like, but that's interesting is that like uh, Art was using nerd as like uh, as, as a slight dig. And we're on the Nerd School podcast. Our whole deal is that we're nerds and we're yeah, sort of really celebrating the fact that nerd isn't an insult anymore. And but yet then he uses it's so it internalized. Himself. Yeah. At you at least, times times like, at least three Here's times tonight. At least three times. Again, I was using nerd as a term of endearment towards it. It did not sound yeah. like a term of endearment. <laughs> I wasn't taking it as an insult or anything, but just exactly. But it wasn't Andy, a term Andy, of endearment. Andy, Andy, Andy knew what it was. Andy was nerd, had nerd, nerd recognizes nerd. Nerd recognizes. Right. Game this is like you're going, Andy. okay. You, like, you, you need nerd. to recognize per, when you're doing something super nerd. Is that a thing per, somebody says? Do people say that? Nerd recognize nerd? Like I just like made that up. What she's saying is game recognize game. Yeah. That's just their remix. That's why I wondered if pe- other people have done that or can Andy like uh, copyright this right now? <laughs> <laughs> sure, it'll, be a, sure. it'll be our merch. It'll be our nerdy. Nerd recognize nerd. <laughs> nerd recognize nerd can be. I mean, we've got a lot of things. Hey, what up, nerd? Uh, what yeah. up, nerd? Anyway. To the list. We talked about right. so I got I can't wait to get into the movie next time because like there yes. were times I I 
love when they do this when they make the villain uh, em- empathizable like i was on michael b jordan's side sometimes like i was like he's got a fucking good point maybe i'm on his side even though he's the bad guy a lot uh, of people were yeah, yeah and so you go back and forth and that's kind of how and you're like ah i this well, should be this- it'll be good to talk about and answer your question yeah, well, even t'challa's on his side half the time yeah he is <laughs> and he is and yeah he, like when he storms up when he's up in the ass the ancestral plane he's like no you did it wrong you were wrong and yeah, that was that was a great moment, uh, and emotional. Anyway, so we'll get into all this. There you go. So next time we'll yeah. actually dig into the movie, friends. But we mm-hmm. told you some fun facts, some things to see, and some things to check out surrounding Let's get the excited movie. This will definitely be a long version. You know, a few episodes. It's a lot TBJ, to say. And TBJ has promised us the next episode she will sing the entire time. Everything she says will be in song. Uh, that's a lie. <laughs> Aaron will finally, finally get her to say Excelsior. At this point, I don't know if that'll ever happen. Excelsior. And I'll let you know next time whether or not Art Star punches me in the nuts next time he sees me. Yes, yeah, so hopefully. Squar- let me know. Nuts. I'll fight on your behalf. We don't punch you, our friends' and, nuts. And then you know what? And you know what? And then Joe come out, and Joe's like, What's going on here, brother? What's I mean, going on? I, I and think then I'll we just can... straight just kick his nuts over and over again. Just you get, and then I'll fight Joe because Joe kick, won't hit me nut back. Kick, nut kick, yeah, I won't hit TV. Yeah, we won't hit you back, but but we would want people to know that you know we just we're just doing this. We're beating Addy up with love. It's, it's love. love. He has already publicly stated that since the eighth grade, he has not enjoyed people punching him in the nuts. <laughs> yeah, no, nobody likes it. Not at all. Nobody likes it, Scott. Brother on record. <laughs> yep <laughs> i just guessed it was but yeah that's what i was talking about like they just walked down like, hey how you doing <laughs> those guys might listen to this yeah bob scott bob scott will admit it he knows he did that yeah no. I, I think they listen sometimes maybe i don't know i don't know maybe who knows hopefully they well do. shout out if they do tweet us. And if you do if bob scott and joe scott tweet us uh or at nerd school Insta- pod. Insta- instagram us at does at anybody use our pod. Twitter at Nurse School Pod anymore? Like, does anybody even run that? Andy, you were supposed to run that. Oh, I was. Uh, I haven't. <laughs> I mean, the whole world kind of got off Twitter for a minute. So. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind okay. of debating whether or not I want to even be on it at all. But I guess. Yeah, uh, it's real shitty now. Twitter, barely, I can barely use it. I mean, it's stuff. been, it's had a lot of shit all yeah. the time. Yes, but, but it's but gotten now pretty it's bad. Just, I yeah I, I won't go into that, but it's, yeah, we're yeah, talking about the, needle, yeah, bro. bad things of Twitter, but but let's yeah get out of here and uh, TBJ is gonna sing us out. <laughs> That's your song. Do it, do it, do it, <laughs> do it. Yes, Arts has got a good voice. He'll sing you out. You better put it to some use and get us some money. I love again. I love how you like. Can can you be my pimp? Can you be my pimp? <laughs> yeah. Are, are you doing the Dana Carvey Ross Perot voice? Is that what that is? Can't I don't know Can what I'm finish? doing, but Can I feel finish. like TBJ is always trying to pimp me out. I'm just managing the funds that are going to come to our podcast. From now on, from now on, you guys have if you to want call to call me it pimping, yeah. that's fine. Call me delicious. She's getting her TBJ, side me. A pimp named TBJ is pimping me out. All well, you person. are delicious. I'm vicious. You're delicious. We all know that. Uh, I'm calling a grown man plan. delicious. <laughs> Do not call me delicious. No one calls <laughs> at the me. next con. Anybody who comes up and gives us a certain monetary amount can rub our yes. stomach. Please, everyone, <laughs> come see us at Heroes Con in Charlotte, June. Oh, man. Something rather. Summer. Months. Just say this summer. Yeah, this <laughs> summer. This we'll summer. give you more details. We're going to give you the panels, panels, rub on panels every day. Art. We're gonna have a day where Andy just shows us action figures, uh, and art start. Now, we're gonna have a whole panel where all I do is play with action figures on the table, and everyone else has to watch me. Like, no, don't touch my toys. Oh, that'd be like a thing we used to do when we were kids with all the GI Joe toys. Is we had like this big sand pile, yeah. and we'd build like a sandcastle or whatever, and then like yeah. do like battle scenes where like That's one of right. us would set up what was going on, and then yeah, while the other one was fun. out of the room, and then they had to come back in, and we had to explain what the story was going on, and then then you'd awesome. leave the room, and they'd continue it in a different yeah. way. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, that, that would be fun. make a really shitty panel. And we'll also, <laughs> you can also, for a dollar, you can drink beer out of Andy's belly button. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it have to be a best. really good dollar. <laughs> <laughs>
Nice crisp one. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everyone. Rate, review, subscribe. Give us 80 stars. And 80 Later, hours. nerds. Peace out, nerds. Thank you for listening to the Nerd School Podcast. Excelsior. Of my kids been by the prisons and people thinking this election to end in racism. Proud of a pessimism, glad to see Obama, but don't expect me not to speak out when I still see problems, Mr. Officer. Now they POTUS look like me, you gon' think again when seeing brothers rolling down the street. Every Martin Luther King on his American dream. Still a Rodney BNB and screaming, fuck the police. Me, I'm running through the pasture, trying to get away from master. But the dogs is on my ass, I gotta move a little faster. Can't fast for Caucasian, but I got a couple papers from the plantation saying I graduated. Congratulations, cool beans, but to most school me. Trying to dodge STDs, living off government cheese. Trust the government, please. Not even if it was me. Sitting in the Oval Office as Commander in Chief. Trying to give us this free, but there's a nigga in my ear saying, You got it, Superman, you ought to keep it here. Get this distinctly clear, I'm all about jetting. Raps Kunta Kinte without the half stepping. A new chapter, packed with new lessons. After that, the final exam. Any questions? QueenCityPodcastNetwork.com.